A section of today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Coming up in this series of Next Level Adventures. For the next few weeks, I'll be road tripping around the beautiful island of Borneo. Borneo, baby! <laughs> I'll be renting a cheap scooter and exploring the Malaysian province of Sabah and trying my best to share with you everything that this magical place has to offer. Oh! And it only grows in Borneo and in Malaysia. So relax and subscribe if you're new and let's enjoy this series together. So, welcome back, and we pick things up somewhere in northern Borneo. I'm about 50 clicks north of the town, Kota Kinabalu, and I'm getting quite peckish. Okay guys, we have made it to a town called Tuaran, not far, only about an hour up the road and uh, first impressions of driving in Borneo, the first one is Brittany, the little Honda, she's not very good to be honest, rattling around, keep banging my knees <laughs> on the plastic front thing whenever I hit a speed bump, but she'll get us there, that's the main thing. And uh, it's hot. Oh Jesus, it's hot. It was raining all day yesterday and I thought, oh, do you know what? It's nice and pleasant here. Nice sea breeze, cool temperatures, but today, oh, it's, it's scorching. The good thing about being back in Malaysia, because I've been here before many times over the years, but never on this channel. But uh, this is one of my favorite drinks. And you very rarely find it anywhere else. It's kind of like an electrolyte soda thing. Very refreshing. This morning when I went for breakfast, uh, Robert recommended me to stop here actually at this specific town, at this specific noodle joint because he says it's very famous. Lok Kun, and they have a famous Turan Mi noodle dish here which they're rustling up for me. And you can have it in chicken or pork or seafood but I went with beef. A little bit of local food on the side of the road in a hot sweaty town in Borneo. I couldn't get a table inside because it's so busy. Which is a good sign, right? It's a nice atmosphere to Borneo. It's all quite laid back. When I stopped for petrol, I had a five minute chat with the guy who filled up the tank. He asked me where I was going and he gave me some advice. He was telling me about other big bikers that had also filled up today that are also going to the tip of Borneo. So people are just curious, they're very friendly. It's nice. Thank you. Here we go, the local delicacy. Looks like a pretty basic dish. Some noodles, some pak choy, right? some vegetable, some cabbage, and the beef on top. The good thing about Malaysia, every restaurant I've been to so far has a very nice homemade spicy sauce to help liven the dishes up. I think Malaysian food is very famous around the world, right? It's got a good mixture, a good combination of Chinese style, local Malay style, and Indian. We'll try some of the vegetables and the beef before we try the noodles. Mm -hmm. If I drown it in this chili sauce, just take it to that next level. <laughs> I'll leave the Google Map link for this place in the description if you do find yourself in Borneo doing a little road trip. Because, uh, yeah, I highly recommend this little noodle shop here in Tuaran. Nice little place. So after that hearty lunch, it was time to get back on the road. I'm not gonna lie, I would have loved to have rented a bigger bike, something with more power, but more importantly, much more comfort. You see, the roads here in northern Borneo have so many potholes and the surface changes from slick tarmac to gravel every few hundred meters or so, or so it seemed, and so the ride was slow going, but even so, driving in the tropics is always a pleasurable experience. And after four hours or so, I saw the turning for the tip of Borneo and our destination for today was getting very close. Okay, I 
have just arrived at this homestay. Tumo, how do you say it? Tumo? Tumbovoi. Tumbovoi. <laughs> it's right on the beach. Yeah. And uh, the tip of Borneo is just up the road. So maybe we'll go there for sunset. But first, I just need to rest my weary eyes. That was quite a long drive. How much is this room? 150. 150. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It'll do. It'll do. Oh, okay, there's aircon. And, uh, yeah, whatever. I've got the best view in the house. Yeah, so you stay or no? Yes. Okay, you register first. Okay. Lovely jubbly. I've checked in and the place is nice. The resort is right on this beach and there's a quite a few foreigners, tourists here and according to the people's nationality on the check-in sheet, most of them are from Sweden, which is interesting. And there's a few people out there practicing surfing and there's a few other little chalets. It seems pretty straightforward. Sadly, no Wi-Fi and no beer. <laughs> so it will be a quiet night now in the distance I can see the tip of Borneo and on Google Maps that is it there that's the very northernmost point and it seems about a half an hour walk so since we've been on the bike for about four or five hours today why don't we go for a nice stroll This area of Borneo at the time of filming in late August was suffering from a storm blowing in from the Philippines. And I didn't know it at the time, but this storm would not just give us an overcast and windy afternoon, but bring in relentless bad weather and rain for the rest of the week. And for the worst weather still forecasted for later tomorrow, I took the opportunity to enjoy the afternoon as much as possible. There is this monument here at the northernmost point to mark that exact fact, and it's a really nice little area. The locals come here all the time during the day to take photos and to enjoy a spot of fishing off the rocks. I'm sure that this area is much more stunning on a calm, beautiful day, but just seeing the locals enjoying themselves, fishing, taking pictures, was all I needed to feel happy inside and to know that from this point on, the road trip can only take us more south and deeper into the jungles and the rainforests and the places that I'm most excited about visiting on this particular trip. And being the proper pisshead that I am, I managed to find a little shop that sold beers and I grabbed a few, went down to the beach to enjoy what would be actually the last time for a very long time that I would see the sun.
Just a quick message to thank my channel sponsor Squarespace and if you're in the lookout for a professional looking website for your business or maybe you're turning your hobby passion project into a new small business then you're going to need a professional looking website to stand out to sell your products and your services and to just give your entire brand a very professional feel and Squarespace is the perfect place and the easiest place to make a website by yourself really easily. Once you create an account, choose one of their award-winning templates and amend the text, add your own pictures, add your own videos, start selling your products, start linking your social media accounts. And as you can see behind me here, I've added widgets to my own YouTube channel and you'd be surprised how easy that is to do by just copying and pasting some simple code and pasting it into the Squarespace interface. Super easy to do, super professional looking. And if you use my code Paddy Doyle at checkout, you'll get 10% off your first domain when you're ready to go live. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to Borneo. Okay, welcome to uh, the middle of nowhere here. <laughs> And uh, it's been a couple of hours just driving through the mountains, having some fun. It's nice to be back in the mountain areas. It always fills me with so much joy. And as I was driving along, I saw this line of minivans and a sign that says that there is the Rafflesia plant growing here and that it has flowered. Now, this is the largest flower in the world. And apparently it's beautiful and it stinks. <laughs> because it um, attracts flies and bugs and things to help germinate through the terrible smell. And I've just paid 30 ringgit on the side of the road. Honestly, nothing for miles. And then I saw it pulled over and here we are. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Blink and you miss it. I think the uh, Chinese tourists give it away. We'll go take a look in a minute. Bloody hell, everyone's here. <laughs> so random. I bet the people who live and own this land are so happy that this plant decided to <laughs> grow practically in their garden. They can literally just charge 30 ringgit per person. They must get like 200, 300 people a day just to look at a flower. Madness. Okay. Oh, okay, there's like a, wow, this is an interesting plant. First impression is it's not as big as you think. It's about the size of a beach ball. <laughs> and there's a faint smell, but I think if I got a bit closer, I could really, apparently it was supposed to be really, really stinky. It's supposed to smell like rotten flesh, but I'm not getting that. Inside, there's actually a flower, like a cute flower. And there's all the flies going in and out of it. And that helps it to germinate and pollinate. And it only grows in Borneo and in Malaysia, as far as I'm aware. So not only is it the biggest flower in the world and the smelliest, but also one of the most rare. And they must have struck gold. They must have struck gold. This is the Malaysian Borneo version of striking gold. 30 ringgit per person. That's like seven US dollars nearly per person. And everyone comes in and you spend 10 seconds or a minute looking at it and you go, wow, it's a big flower. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I have a quick question about the flower. Yeah. When, when did your flower open? Uh, six, six days. Six days. Yeah. Ah, it's been open for six days. Yeah. And and how how many days will it stay open? Uh, so, <laughs> nine months. Nine months. Yeah. And it will and then it will yeah, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how many years before it opens again? Um, Does it open every every year, every two years? Um, five. Every five years yeah. it will open. Yeah. Open. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank there we you. go. So it, it will stay open. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> it will stay open for five months or six months, and then it will close for five years, and it just opened six days ago. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky. You got the most rarest plant, one of the most rarest flowers, I should say, growing in their garden.
Okay, into the jungle of Borneo we go. First time on this trip that we get a sense for the jungle by doing this canopy walk. And you've got to keep your voice down and keep an ear out for the wildlife. God knows what we'll see. Um, there are a lot of people at this park, coach loads, but I think the rain scared everyone off because everyone came running off the canopy walk on my way up here. I had to pay another 10 ringgit just to get into the canopy walk. So the entrance didn't include it, which is a bit strange. But anyway, we're here now. And the canopy, obviously, is the highest level of the rainforest and these trees are, are bloody tall so I wonder if this is going to be <laughs> quite the walk, I don't know <laughs> okay okay This is definitely a two-handed job because it's not balanced. So you have to balance it with your body weight. So if I lean to the left, the whole thing wants to go to the left. <laughs> Makes it kind of hard to concentrate on the canopy because I feel like I'm at the circus. There we go. <laughs> sweating buckets. As you can imagine with that storm that's growing on top of us it's sucking up the moisture from the rainforest that we're in so you can almost feel the moisture being sucked out of you. I'm trying to find a frog. A frog or a trying to find one. <laughs> Let's have a look. Any frogs, any bugs, any snakes? Oh snakes. Yeah. Oh there's a snake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus, the wood is starting to rot and break apart. That's not good. Oh. Cool. And scary. In equal measures. Oh. <laughs> I can see a lizard, but it's camouflage and far away. He'll be able to get it on his camera, I can't because I haven't got the right lens. It is. Can you just hold my camera for me? Just get a video of the bridge right. for two, two seconds. <laughs> Okay. Goodness gracious me. This is fun. I'm glad I came here. If the bridges were a bit more stable, we could actually have a look around properly but the problem is it's actually terrifying <laughs> I've never sweat so much in my entire life I can feel the steam room growing inside my jacket you see this is nice this is the visceral tangible experience of being able to literally look at the canopy and search for for bugs and look into birds nests and say hello to the snakes but to be honest when there's people behind you people in front of you you don't want to disturb everyone so you just want to get on the bridge and get off 
Really recommend coming here. Really recommend it. Quite expensive, but what an experience. I wasn't really expecting this. I was thinking, I was expecting it to be a little bit rubbish. Because <laughs> I've been to a few canopy walks before and it's, it's not like this. This is exhilarating. And look, just listen. All the birds. Beautiful experience, if not a little bit terrifying. This is cool, you know? You can actually grab onto the vines, like Tarzan. <laughs> when you think of Borneo, right? This is what you think of, rainforest. Nearly there. I'll get down. <laughs> They're trying to take a picture. Wow, it's raining in the rainforest of Borneo. And we're in the canopy. Freaking cool. Okay, we're here. I'm cold and I'm wet. I found a place on booking when I was at the canopy having lunch called George Adventure Base. And I chose it because it has an incredible view of Mount Kinabalu. Although I don't think we'll get much of a view today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, let's check in. Let's dry and warm up. I'm soaked. Absolutely soaked and cold. Ugh. Quick room tour while I'm still soaking wet. <laughs> Everything. I mean, these are actually waterproof, but in that weather, you know, if you're driving, like that was an hour and I just got destroyed, eventually the water just comes through. Anyway, room tour already. Wet clothes, wet bag, table, bed, towels, hot shower, and a view of Mount Kinabalu. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> going around some of the corners, the wind was blowing me off my line. So I was just going super slow. And I didn't want to pull over and let this pass because it just doesn't look like it's going to pass. Got myself a nice hot Milo, which is a chocolate drink here in Malaysia. So that warm us right up. I feel so much better now. Warm clothes, warm socks, new pair of shoes. And actually the, the storm has seemed to pass. 
uh, it's, it's disappeared. And the mountain itself is slowly revealing itself. It's covered in rain and covered in waterfalls because of the fresh downpour. And she's striking, very beautiful. But I wouldn't like to be climbing that mountain today. No, thank you. We are due to climb this, by the way, but not till the end of the trip. So I'm glad I didn't book it for today because I'd be terrified going up that in this weather. This whole area looks gorgeous. We'll enjoy the afternoon, watch the drama unfold on the mountain itself and see what, see what happens tomorrow. We're definitely gonna have fun around this area though, that's for sure.